Welcome back. While we are surrounded by talent from around the world at this truly global event, we would like to take this time to bring attention to the victims of the Nepal earthquake who are struggling to rebuild their lives in the wake of last month's disaster. If you would like to donate and help with relief efforts, please visit internationalmedicalcorps.org or head to the Lull Esports Facebook page for more information. On our fourth and final day here in Tallahassee, Florida, Korea's SK Telecom T1 and China's Edward Gaming are about to do battle in a best of five, which will determine the best team in the world heading into the second, second half of the 2015 season. Now, before we look into that matchup, let's meet our finalists. EDG now facing SKT in the finals. Going to be an amazing matchup. This matchup is going to be very, very close in the final. Edward Gaming going to take this series 3 to 0. Pickpen is a good pick. I'm going to go to the UVA. 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 The Ice Plus gets first blood. Bing is on the board. Team. 처음에 저희랑 붙었을 때는 저희가 아직 잘 몰라가지고 졌더라면 지금은 많이 SKT에 대해 알려졌고 그때 그렇게 강하지 않은, 않은 팀이란 것도 알려진 것 같아요. SK Telecom T1 are your first finalists. And my word, were they pushed to the limits. 就是因为各个赛区都是最强的队伍来的所以说这次EDG代表中国战队出战能一下这次冠军还是说明中国的IPL是属于最强的 Ladies and gentlemen, your 2015 mid-season invitational finalists, SK Telecom T1 and Edward Gaming. Gentlemen, both of these teams have fought incredibly hard to get to this point. There is a lot of pressure on their shoulders to get here today. Yeah, you just saw the big breath out of Bengi as well. He was like, had the weight of the world on his shoulders right there. You know, when you have the weight of one of the world's best junglers on the other side pressuring against you, it's a tall task. He's probably up to it today, though. We'll see. But I think everybody feels really composed. At least they make the impression. I think everybody is ready for this match. And I expect a lot of really great League of Legends coming in today. I like what they're talking about, how they think the picks and bans is what it's going to come down to. And they're not shown on stage, but the coaches play a huge part of this. And I think we talked about it backstage yesterday that Aaron, EDG's coach, has been with Clear Love for a very long time since his World Elite days. All right, well, let's start on that side of the rift. The LPL's Edward Gaming Spawn, what's your take so far on this team going into this matchup? Yeah, everyone talks about EDG's carries, but I want to take a look at their support player, Mako. He's got... Thresh in seven out of eight games, and he had it something ridiculous like 12 games in the LPL as well. Someone needs to take away his champion pool because this guy is so good at setting up exactly what EDG want to do around the map. He is one of their playmakers, and I think people need to recognize that in this series. Yeah, he clears, he gets with clear love, and they just roam around the map forever. And then Deft, the AD carry that he's alongside, had some great performances yesterday in the early game, got a ton of kills for himself, but then his late game positioning was a little questionable. It looked a little sloppy. And and during the group stages as well, I want to see this guy step up and carry some games because he's up against Bang, who is no slouch. I think we need to give even more recognition to Clear Love. This guy is a beast. He has played almost every champion possible in the LPL that you can put in the jungle right now. And he's up against Bengi, who's been known for having a very small champions pool. He's only performed on the Rek'Sai and the Nunu exceptionally. Clear Love can also play Nunu to the same level that Bengi can. Interestingly enough, though, Yesterday, when SKT played Nunu versus Fnatic, the total buff count was 11 red buffs and 11 blue buffs to SKT and only one blue and one red to Fnatic. So I think that this is going to be a hot pick for this game, if not 
always banned. Yeah, I definitely think that we have to hit on Bengi's champion pool. It telegraphs how they're going to play the early game. If he gets a Rek'Sai, they're going to try and gank start a couple of fights. If he gets a Nunu, they try and play the map a little bit more. I think that might be a slight weakness, although I actually think that they play the Nunu extremely well, so it will be a contested pick. Yeah, I definitely think the Nunu is going to be up there, but when you do pick a Nunu, you give away a lot of the pressure, and you kind of make the other jungler as useless as you in terms of pressure. So if he's able to keep clear love held down, it'll allow the lanes to thrive, because they have really aggressive top laners here. Marin and Koro, that's going to be a heated matchup in that top lane. Whoever gets the edge, we've been seeing all tournament long, when you get that TP advantage. When a gank comes through and you're missing your flash, there's a ton of pressure in that top lane. So Koro, really big beast up there. And Marin, he fell to some of the pressure of Huni yesterday. And if he's up against Koro today, it's a tall order once again for this Con team. Continuing on the line there, though, of the jungle pressure, if both junglers are even or that Nunu does go and keep clear love down, we've said so many times that EDG's laners across the board are a step up above everybody else. So would that not be a win there for EDG? Yeah, that's why the, the Nunu is going to be a really strong pick. But at the same time, though, you know, the match that... The, the way that EDG plays relies a lot more on ganking than when SKT plays, with the exception of when they run the rec side. When they run rec side, they run rapid just as much as EDG does. And I think it's going to be a huge clash of styles because it, it all depends as to who has flashed. And that's had, that has been the development of the tournament in that these teams punish the second that somebody has no flash instantly. They will adjust their route the second somebody oversteps, uses their flash, Go for the kill. Well, now on the flip side of the rift, we do have SKT, who you're seeing on your screens right now. Important to note that Easy Hoon will be starting in game one. Yeah, and I like this because we're talking about the jungle, the top and the bottom lane, and that really isolates mid. And I think in an isolated mid lane, Easy Hoon is actually the preferable choice right now because he's that brick wall. You know he's champion pool. It's a Cassiopeia, it's the Azir, and it's a Vladimir. He likes to farm up. Very low kill participation before 15 minutes, but after that, involved in everything that his team does. So I think they really are looking to isolate point and shut that down. Yeah, I feel like uh, you jokingly say that Easy Hoon is the god of agriculture and is just farming away. I think he does that exceptionally well. There's very little trace that he's actually losing. Um, as sad as I am to not see Faker for game one, I think it's a preferable choice in this match. Yeah. And when we were talking about, and you were, you were saying EDG has an advantage when a Nunu's locked in because of the pressure, I actually disagree. I think that if SKT is able to stop the early game pressure, because that seems to be their weakness, if they make it to the late game, allow Easy Hoon to be that positional god that he is in team fights, that's their strength. Because right now, we've been seeing EDG have much better early games than SKT. Yeah, and on the point of pressure, I think we also have to take a step back and look at yesterday. SKT having five really tough games, and even in the games where they were winning, it was not by such a huge margin where they just stumped over the enemy. I think the coaching staff needs to step up between the games to adjust as good as possible because SKT is where actually shown where their weaknesses are. And EDG just kind of rolled over the enemy in, this, in those matches. So I think that SKT, if they adapted really well from yesterday, have an edge from the coaching side, but need to do that consistently between the matches as well. Yeah, and even during the matches, you kind of had to set your team up to go into them and be like, even if you have 7K gold lead, don't underestimate SKT because they've come back from games. Don't let the pressure up because even when they're behind, they still have wave management. They still seem to have pressure in a lot of their games, so you can't let that up. Yeah, I think the biggest game from the five, uh, thing from the five-game series was SKT had to show everything. There was no way they wanted to show what they wanted to do on Nunu on the world stage and how they play that. You could see that they were holding it back until the very end. They kept fakering all, all of the time. So, so they didn't they show everything. That mm. last card, that is the last trick card they have in that they use a sub. But I think that on the other side of the map, EDG just played outright ruthless aggression early game. We've seen in the LPL final against LGD when they really were stretched that there's much more to this team as well. So I think that Aaron does have the benefit of holding a couple of cards closer to his chest. All right, well, all this knowledge laid out on the, laid out on the table. Time to get your predictions. Who's going to walk away MSI champions? Spawn, we're starting with you. Yeah, I think that as I have been the whole time, EDG will take this one. I think that it is finally time for Korea to fall, and it's only because this is probably the best individual team you could put together at the moment. Well, so if there's a couple Koreans on the team, is Korea really falling or are they just changing regions? I don't know. Maybe they just had a holiday <laughs> for a while and enjoyed sunny China. Well, no surprise with our first one yeah, here. Sheepy, who are you going to with? Say, no surprise for EDG there. Um, 
I'm actually sticking here with SKT. I think they have a really strong performance. Um, I think that they will take this really seriously. And, you know, it's always the same. Everybody's struggling, but in the end, Korea comes out ahead and wins. And they have more Koreans on their team as well. <laughs> From the shows I watch, it's usually a matter of the hybrid or the mixed being that comes out on top. And I think that the hybrid of Korea and China will triumph over the pure breed Korea. So I'm going to go with EDG. <laughs> Man, I thought pure breed was the... Uh the classy one, the luxury. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to have to question the, the show. <laughs> show, show. You're watching show crumbs. I, I watch the same show as crumbs. I'm on. Yeah. All right. okay. Well, I go SKT on this one. I've watched the last two world championships, and I've seen China fall to Korea. So that's where I'm throwing in my hat here. All right. Well, there you have it. The desk is split. So to break the tie, let's check out the vote on lolesports.com. And right now, the fans are giving it to SKT with 77% of the vote. So taking a lesson from Monty, going with the Koreans, watching those past two worlds. Not watching the shows. That Not Crumbs watching has. the shows that Crumbs <laughs> watch. I mean, it seems like all of the information points in SKT's direction. I don't know. As we send it up to our guys in the caster booth for game one, we're going to take a look at China's LPL and why Def stands out amongst such a very talented pool of carries. Now Needs the tide away. Death, what the hell? Get the dribble kill. Get the quadra. Get the penta kill. What on earth is going on? I think that is a very 哦，那个暴走罗尼啊，就这种后期特别开瑞的英雄嘛，因为他在前面团队就会让他一直打钱，一直打钱，然后到团战的话，他们是会非常强的。我到，그리고，新작한거，하여튼，我想원딜러서나
kept coming up on the top of our list. Ergot Calista is going to be two of the most contested picks yeah. here. One of the big questions is, can Def perform at the same level as Bang when it comes to playing this Calista here? Which team will prioritize getting as a first pick? Or maybe just ban...